the lost city of Atlantis has been searched for both on land and at sea. Why is it so hard to find? And what secrets does it hold? Could this ancient city built on water be hidden in the desert, the Sahara Desert? A shocking new discovery makes it impossible to ignore this probability. Stay till the end to possibly find out to find the true location of this city is hidden. How did the Atlantic come to be associated with the Rishat? The mysterious Richa structure, also known as the Eye of the Sahara, can be found in Africa near west-central Mauritania. It is on the Adrar Plateau in the Sahara. Space observable, multiple concentric circles of exposed sedimentary rock make up this nearly symmetrical geologic structure. We first came across it in that manner. During the 1960s, space travelers who were essential for undertaking Gemini were looking for roundabout effect structures when they went over the Eye of the Sahara. It was initially thought to have been brought about by an impact from another planet, but after more thought, it turned out to have been created entirely on Earth. It is now used as a landmark by astronauts and as an intriguing object by curious Google Earth users. But some people think it's more than that. Is there any truth to that notion? Perhaps a link to Atlantis. What exactly is the lost city of Atlantis before that? The mythical island known as the Lost City of Atlantis disappeared into the depths of the ocean a long time ago, bringing with it the most advanced civilization ever. It is first mentioned in Plato's Timaeus and Critias, which were written around 360 BC. He said that Atlantis was bigger than Libya and Asia together. This meant that it was bigger than most of Turkey and Northern Africa today. Plato asserted that the island was ruled by a magnificent kingly confederation with jurisdiction over the entire island, numerous other islands, and portions of the continent. The city was divided into land and water-filled rings that alternated, and bridges connecting the center to the outside were surrounded by gates and guards. However, the myth of Atlantis dates back to the Greek gods, particularly Poseidon, when Poseidon, the Greek god of the sea, earthquakes, and horses, was traveling the world in search of the largest island, he came across Atlantis. Cleito, his true love, was discovered here. He made the rational decision to claim Cleito as his own and not be concerned about other people falling in love with her. He erected a palace on top of a mountain and enclosed it with three circular moats that increased in width and were separated by large land ringlets and placed her there to live for an unknown period. Clayto had five sets of twin boys. The first, Atlas, became king of Atlantis and gave the ocean its name, which is why it is called the Atlantic Ocean. Different children were likewise leaders of the encompassing nine realms, named the Realms of Atlantis. The island was supposed to be independent, developing its harvests and animals, and having a very much kept up with water system framework. Atlantis is depicted on a 16th century map, there are rumors that the people who live on Atlantis are extraterrestrials who came to the island 50,000 years ago from the Lyrian star system. They could live for an average of 800 years and were all taller and fairer than we are today. They were thought to have powers like being able to alter volcanic eruptions and control the weather. This could also be related to the idea that everyone there was half God, half human. Here is some evidence that the Eye of the Sahara is indeed the lost city of Atlantis, assuming Atlantis is real. While reviewing airborne photographs of the Eye, there are huge white spots noticeable. On the surface of the sand, these are pockets of salt. This suggests that ocean water once passed through this region in the last 12,000 years. 12,000 is not a random number. Recently, several articles have stated that the climate of the Sahara Desert was once lush and green. After a gigantic flood around a long time back, everything was stripped away, abandoning an abandoned no man's land. That is approximately 56 million years earlier than previously thought when it was believed that a portion of Africa was submerged. The Trans-Saharan Seaway submerged a portion of Africa at this time. Therefore, if you claim that it cannot be Atlantis because it is not underwater, reconsider. Although it is now landlocked, the eye has not always been like that. As of late, some already ordered CIA documents opened up to general society. Although there were still some classified redactions, they provided new information regarding the eye of the Sahara. In 1967, the CIA carried out a covert operation in which aircraft were secretly flown to approximately a dozen distinct locations worldwide to conduct surveillance in search of geomagnetic anomalies. Scientists wanted to check for any differences or phenomena 
because the Earth's geomagnetic field shield us from space. One of the tested locations was the Richot structure. It was said that the center island of Atlantis had interesting features like two freshwater springs, one of ice and one of hot water, because there are no other places in the world that have springs like this. This would be very special. Similar circumstances might have prompted the mission in the first place. However, we do not yet possess a response. A book titled Adam and Eve was another item taken from the declassified files. The entire book was made available, but its place in the CIA files remains a mystery. There are claims in the book that ocean water covered entire continents approximately 11,600 years ago. That number has returned. This number coincides with the climate change that took place in the Sahara from lush green to barren desert. Additionally, it coincides with the Atlantis sinking. In addition, it takes place during the Younger Dryas. A well-known illustration of earthly abrupt change is the Younger Dryas. It all started about 14,500 years ago when the Earth's climate changed from a cold, glaciated state to a warmer one. It is believed that the end occurred about 11,500 years ago. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration says that that end was particularly abrupt. The lost city of Atlantis may have completely vanished rather than simply submerged into the ocean as a result of this. Now, to answer your concerns, how could the eye of the Sahara be Atlantis if it were an island and not a landlocked city? Ancient words are frequently taken exactly as they are presented. They forget that words change over time and meanings are interpreted. Take a look at the Declaration of Independence, which was penned a few hundred years ago, but contains certain phrases that are definitely out of date. Imagine reading documents from BC and assuming that nothing has changed since then. Translation adds yet another layer of complexity to Plato's writings. Misinterpretation and word loss will result from translating ancient Greek into contemporary English. The term island could be an example of this. The Greek word nesos was used in Plato's writings. This was interpreted as meaning island. However, as stated in the book Joining the Dots, the Greek word nesos can refer to a wide variety of things, including a peninsula, coast, or land within a continent that is surrounded by lakes, rivers, or springs in Plato's Atlantis in the central Mediterranean. This suggests that Plato might not have been referring to an island at all. He might have been referring to the Eye of the Sahara. There is also the contention that Plato wrote this as a morality, even though all of his previous allegories and tales were explicitly classified as fiction. He repeatedly stated in his work that this was a true story. Also, on the off chance that a novice paleontologist could find the unbelievable city of Troy utilizing Homer's The Iliad, for what reason couldn't Plato's works be utilized to track down the city of Atlantis? The fact that the eye of the Sahara is higher than the sea level is the primary reason that it is not Atlantis. However, 11,600 years is a long time. Since Atlantis would have fallen, the area has risen. The salt in the area indicates that the ocean once flowed over this region of Africa, indicating that it is now higher than sea level as a result of the Earth's crust shifting up and down and side to side, especially since this region experienced a lot of volcanic activity. We would have found Atlantis by now if it were as large as Plato claimed and had submerged into the ocean, with every one of the oceanographers, submariners, and others who concentrate on the sea, somebody will undoubtedly have seen leftovers of structures or relics. However, you have the answer if we recall the massive flood that destroyed the Sahara's lush vegetation. Something that could have wiped out a land's vegetation and other life forms completely could also have wiped out a whole city with little to no evidence. So what do you think? Could the eye of the Sahara be the lost city of Atlantis? Hit that subscribe button and to know more on the topic watch this video, Graham Hancock Atlantis.